Welcome to Reading and Writing Between the Lines, a podcast series about communication skills in the workplace. I'm your host, John Witzman. Join me as I speak with industry professionals and Conestoga faculty and alumni to explore their journeys with reading and writing skills. Follow us as we talk about how communications learning has changed over the years, how these skills are used in a wide range of industries, and the future of workplace communications. Do you remember taking notes in in your <laughs> classes? Was was that something? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. I was Pen and paper. Take, yeah, I was. Yeah, I'd print off the, the slides and and uh, grind through them. That's why it's a bit as an educator. Um, and I have to ad- admit, there's multiple ways to to note take and acquire Absolutely. knowledge. But it does irk me a bit when I see people come to class and you know they've just got sort of a phone in front of them and they're just ready to listen. I'm like, it's very unlikely. You, 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 all you who don't have pen and paper are sponges and you just can acquire knowledge by listening. I don't think that's the case. So right. Like when you, you go to a restaurant and, you're, and, and you, your server doesn't have the pen and, and yeah. paper in their hand, you're like, I, I really would prefer if you were writing yeah. this down. I've got some specific <laughs> requests that I want. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. But um, do you remember what that um, you said you had your textbook um, in your hand the other day that you, when you were when you were moving and oh, you, yeah. you found some old uh, some old textbooks and mm-hmm. there was a, a, a sheet in there was that was that a, a sheet of paper that that had notes from a from a class Yeah, I was. Um, I feel like I, I um, learning didn't come quite easily for me though. Um, like I was I was someone who struggled quite a bit. I shouldn't say struggle, but worked quite a bit. Worked at it, yeah. Worked at it to get like a high seventy. Do you remember you know? what that 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 process was like? Like what what did that work entail? Like if I'm uh, talking to an athlete, let's say, and they told me that they you know weren't always such a good hockey player or yeah. always such a good cricket player, and and then they got better. I could imagine them going into the gym and and working on individual skills, yeah. getting stronger with their muscles, yeah. all that stuff, but. I'm curious to know what that process looked like for you as a student. Do you mm-hmm. remember? Do you have a recollection of what the the, yeah. the working at it was? Not pretty clear, actually. Oh, great. Yeah, it had a pretty clear process. I'd love to hear about it. And now I'll, I'll even do it one even better and kind of assimilate it to, to training. Okay, great. Yeah, so um, like you want to get stronger. You want to even go into a competition, you know, uh, powerlifting. You can't go in there and just like hammer on a squat and do one rep and call it a day, right? It's repetitions. Yeah. And that's why they're called repetitions. Right. Right. Um, so, yeah, that was me in university uh, or, you know, even just now it's reps. Like you got to get your reps in. Right. Yes. Whether it's learning a new skill, you got to you got to get the reps. Right. Um, so, yeah. So that was me. I was, you know, I I took the content in one time when I listened in lecture and my my job there was for myself. I kind of figured this out later, not quite right at day one. Yeah. But it, it was good that I did. Because I did see my success get a little bit better in school, I'd, I'd taken the knowledge one time, and my job in the lecture was to make sure I understood it the way that it was being presented. And if I didn't, I put my hand up. Yeah, and um, put another rep in my schedule. I just go home and um, just look over it one more time, just before the end of the day. Right? This wasn't perfect. No, but it, know, it, I wasn't perfect at yeah. this. But that was my process, and whether or not I actually hit it every week, it was. Sure. At the end of the week, I'd go over everything one more time. And then um, take a little collection points, maybe just kind of larger topics, kind of partway through, three weeks in, yep. go through it again. And then when it came, came time to like a big assignment or, or a midterm or an exam, I've already seen this like three or four times yes. now. And I've manipulated a bit. I've, and Because the, the answer to those questions too was, do I understand it at the end of the week is no, I need to look at it again. So I'm just analyzing this again, right? This content, whether it be analyzing human gait, biomechanics, or even, you know, kind of what we're chatting about, like just uh, fundamentals of, of writing and reading or whatever it is, you got to get the reps in. Like you have to. I think that's such a great analogy comparing it to, to the training, Mm. um, uh, piece and, and, uh, just purely drilling down on the idea that it takes time and, and in that time, uh, repetition will, will build that strength, build that ability gradually. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was fascinating to hear about your process. Um, but I think equally fascinating to imagine you sort of discovering that process on your own, yeah. right? finding out something that worked for you. And, mm-hmm. and so I can imagine, you know, students listening, taking elements of that process, sure. right. Um, you know, identifying a kind of foundation, um, 
and then building on it with their own adaptations, what works for them, what yeah. works for their schedule, works for their, their learning techniques. But the, the fundamentals of seeing that material multiple times, yeah, right? yeah. doing, seeing it in, in, in different contexts, um, taking it in, uh, in the immediate instance and then right after, and then again yeah. later, right? Like all of that has, I think at its core, a, a commitment to the process that can be emulated and adapted in so many different ways. Yeah. Like the, like you said, the models there, you can adapt it, do whatever you want with it. Like for me, it was, you know, it was a few years ago at this point now. So, um, we didn't have quite the technologies that you can kind of organize things right now. But, um, so for me, it was a lot of pen and paper Yeah. and admittedly, and I did kind of figure this out later, um, which I did earlier, but it was a lot of reading. So I'd look over my notes and I'd read them, but I'd read it in my head. Right. And I find I found out that that wasn't a really good way of doing it because, one, I'm not a very good auditory learner anyways. And there's not even really any audio. It's just thoughts in my head. Yeah. Right? So, so just would you read them out loud it. after? I did then. Yeah. Amazing. But then I kind of sorted out like, you know, through education, we're trying to help our students and stuff. I found and researched and, you know, found some strategies to help my students. But find some like different modes of doing this, right. this review or learning, like, so speak out loud instead of just say it in your head, write it down, speak it as you're writing it kind of thing, present it to somebody. Um, all those things, just looking at it from different angles, yeah. you know, you can make the picture a bit more yeah, uh, present three dimensional. To somebody. Yeah. That's a great way of, of, of characterizing it too, right? Getting these ideas to lift off the page or the screen as the yeah. case may be. And, having them be three-dimensional in the world mm -hmm. so that they are real. We, one of the challenges that I think that uh, I face as an educator in the communication space is, is, is um, encouraging people to see the, the text on the page or the text on the screen as a material object, yeah. right? When we, have, when we talk about the material objects that are around us, right, tools, um, fitness equipment, right? They're, yeah. they're, they're, they communicate their purpose in their shape, right? And, yeah. and, and um, the ideas that we sort of pack into our words uh, are, are, are less visibly obvious in what it is that they're trying to achieve. Yeah. Um, so I love your idea of, of, of getting them three-dimensional, whether it's talking with a, a friend or presenting to somebody else. Um, when you were talking, it made me think about one of the advantages of being able to take notes digitally now mm -hmm. is that there are so many programs that can read that text back out to you. Yeah. Right? So now you're all sort of listening to your own audio program yeah. that you created. So it's, it's, it's so advantageous now that you, that you mentioned that. I'm just imagining like back in the day I could study, I could go for a walk yeah. and then, uh, and then listen to a podcast. It's, you know, it's funny. I, I don't want to dive too much into this, but, um, uh, I lived in Windsor, Ontario, yeah. uh, for the past year and a half or so before I came back here to Kitchener. And I was working at the college, Dune Campus, so that's a good two and a half hours. So wow. two and a half hours each week uh, there and back. I had to find something to pass the time because if anyone knows that highway stretch is boring. Yes. Boring. Yeah. Very boring. Um, so yeah, so I found podcasts um, and that was essentially two and a half, five hours a week of podcasting essentially, right? I was listening to it and it was amazing. I really wish, well, actually where I was going with this was I can drive along that route now because I go, the, my uh, my in-laws live there, so I, we visit them quite often. And I can drive along a certain stretch and be like, oh my gosh, that's exactly the spot where I was listening to Elizabeth Holmes when she was busted at Theranos, wow. right? And, and like these little cues happen. Yes. So I can imagine if someone was listening to their own notes yeah. while, whilst going for a walk, you know, and then reproduce that walk, it's just like constant kind of triggers. Yes. So imagine yourself as, as opposed to trying to sifting through your notes on an exam, right. trying to recall this information. You're just like... Oh, that's when I saw that swan at Victoria Park. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's where that muscle goes. Boom. Right. right and, and we and we know that the affective uh, uh, experience is an important part of of how we learn. Right. So how people what people are feeling when mm -hmm. they're being asked to learn, yeah. um, and how they feel about the learning process really has a big impact on 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 how they learn, how how successfully they uh, achieve the the learning outcomes that they're trying to achieve. Yeah. And that marks the end of another episode of Reading and Writing Between the Lines, a podcast hosted by me, John Witzman, on behalf of the Communications Department and School of Interdisciplinary Studies at Conestoga College. You can find other episodes of this series on our YouTube channel, 
reading and writing between the lines. Stay tuned for more episodes. Thanks for listening.